Warning, the following may contain adult themes, concepts, and languages. Be aware that there is a separation between the character and the player, even when the pronoun I is used. Nice. Um, so nobody is going to do anything. Well, specific. I guess um, just that while we're waiting, since I assume we're going to be waiting for a couple of days. Well, a day at least. Yeah. So I would uh, visit that druid to, that I had met before, just to tell him what we found in the in the forest and what's been going on, and then I'd just come back and camp and wait for them to be ready to move on. All right, we'll play that out if you want to. No, no, I'm just letting you know. That's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. That's what that's what you did during the day. The druid was um, well, basically listening to your story, especially uh, the parts about the spiders. He found reasonably interesting. Cool. Um, he also asked you if you found um, anything apart from the spiders. Uh, that would be unusual in the animal kingdom. That sounds like a leading question. Yeah, it cut up a bit, but you're asking, did, did any of the spiders have something on them that would be unusual in the animal kingdom? No, uh, were there other creatures or things that would be unusual? Well, I would have told them about the, was it the shrew or whatever that we, we talked to that told us about the cabin? The weasel. The weasel, that's what it was, sorry. Um, and I would have mentioned, I guess, about the the spiders being like reanimated once we had left. You didn't know. Oh, I thought well, we did. No, because you basically told him, uh, told the guys that you... We, uh, to we told them, we didn't actually see it, but we. But I, I would have verbally said it, so they would have heard that. And we were already out, so we shouldn't have forgotten that. I said it, I don't know why I said it. So that's what you remember. Okay, by the way, that's all I remember. I don't remember anything strange other than that, other than the sizes. But he Leading was already question. aware of that. Leading question. Should there be? Hmm? Is there? He asked if you like, do you want to, is there anything else out there? It's a leading question. No, he, ba he basically uh, tells you that there were multiple... Uh, he, he feels that the forest is growing weirder. That creatures are getting larger than they ought to be. It's just... Like he, a giant weasel? Yeah, like a giant weasel. He's weird it out, basically. Okay. The world is leveling with us! <laughs> <laughs> so we're growing bigger then. <laughs> okay. Um, Gold Freak. You yes. basically spent the entire day with this dwarf um, smithing away your own smithing tools. Yep, and I don't sweat, so... <laughs> it's a, it's an interesting day. Yeah! Maybe kind um, of, I'm a, I'm a, he probably noticed I'm a bit of a weird elf. Yeah, he, he, he finds it interesting that you are kind of fire resistant. <laughs> that the fires don't seem to hurt you anyway. But... Yeah, you don't hear him. I'm whine completely about it unfazed by heat, apparently. Yeah, he d you don't hear him whine about it. Actually, he finds it kind of useful. Um, he also uh, he, he shows you how to make your own um, tools specifically, but he also shows you a little bit of how to prepare the iron um, to be able to be used, which are all things you can use later on. Um. After that, in the evening, you go wherever with a new uh, pile of shiny new toys. Okay. Um, Yuma and Tommy. Both of you were uh, in the tavern, I take it. Not the whole day for me. I'm actually, like, with, like sometime in the early afternoon or so, I actually would like to visit the blacksmith's wife. All right, or just you'll visit the blacksmith's right? wife. Um, Tommy, you hear a couple of interesting snap bits of information. Um, 
you hear it uh, from a group of people, uh, traveling people, hunters. Um, they are speaking to each other about a uh, city to the south, Abdera, which you can see on the map. Lays, uh, lies near the coast, it's a pretty big city. And they say that around the general area of the city, uh, um, cockatrices have been seen. Um, <laughs> and that there is an actual uh, re substantial reward for anyone who managed to slay the, uh, a decent amount of creatures. Quick, call a witcher! Because, <laughs> because they are uh, <laughs> relatively <laughs> dangerous. You also hear a, a weird, weird little tale about a, a city, or about a town to the east with uh, statues that look like living creatures. All statues of, um, or around the town and in the town itself, there are statues of people, statues of sheep, of uh, uh, other types of cattle, but also statues of deer, foxes. Bunnies, etc. And people uh, say that the statues look beautiful. Um, yeah, the statues look beautiful and really lifelike. You hear some tales um, from well, this general area between Himera and Abdera that. There might have been sightings of what people call a land shark. Hmm. Ding and, dong! And people keep saying that. <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> people say that uh, a lot of people from that area are moving away. Because, well, it's a ferocious creature and everybody basically knows that land sharks are uh, relatively dangerous. What's up with all this relativity stuff? Yeah, well, everything is <laughs> relative. And finally, you hear some weird news. Let's see. Um, around. I hope you're writing this down because I'm not. <laughs> you, hear, I am. you hear some news from the Malik. Um, uh, apparently, there's a manticore on the loose. And the male is quite close to your general or to your position. Okay. So after finishing, um, the smithing Drake would have gone to see if anyone else is still like around and no, well catch half, up. half day around when you are still beating Iron. Yeah, you might after, actually enter the uh, the shop. So Yuma. Right. So yeah, I visit the blacksmiths. Uh, shop. She welcomes you in. I did look around to see if there's anything that I could use. All things are useful, depending on what you want to do with it. Um, so, what you're proficient in is pretty much the best right now. Yeah. Unless you got 75 gold to drop on a hand crossbow. Would I be proficient in that? I'm pretty sure you're proficient in hand crossbows. Uh, Just the hand crossbows. I'm not 100% certain. And what's what what's the benefit? Oh, the hand you ignore the loading property, right? Or no? It's light, so you can dual wield it. So you could basically have a rapier in one hand, and a you hand could have a knows. loaded hand crossbow and fire it with one hand. You only get the one shot, but you could use like a. I think you could use a bonus action to do that, right? Probably. Yeah, it's like a. Um, you, it's like with uh, having daggers in your hand. <laughs> yeah, but you, you can't. What's, you just what's don't the damage? Load. It's a d6. Actually, less than a light crossbow. Right, but yep, you okay. use it in one hand. Comparing it to a dagger, which you would be using in your offhand, it's just as good. Wait, Range. so I could I could have a light crossbow Actually, in one better. hand and a hand crossbow in the other? Yeah, a you light, can reload either a light one. crossbow is only twenty five. Oh no, wait, crossbow a light. light. Um, you have a crossbow hand. That's it, it's two handed. It's two handed. You can't do that. The light crossbow is two handed. Okay. Yeah, you have the hand the crossbow hand is not. Crossbow, yeah, but that's seventy-five. And you need crossbow expert to be able to ignore the loading property. So, 
Theoretically, maybe, maybe, maybe later. I have enough for it. But... Theoretically, <laughs> what you could do, I think, let me think, if you shoot, sheath your rapier on your next turn, you load your crossbow. No, but that's your interaction with an object. So you can sheath your thing, load your crossbow, and fire your crossbow again, or just load your crossbow and do nothing. It's kind of complicated because you can only interact with one object for free, and the loading of the ammunition is considered to be your free interaction with the object. Because you'd have to crank it back versus a normal bow. Put in the bolt. Is, put in the bolt, yeah. Put, well, not, not putting in the bolt. Putting in the bolt's actually the free action. It's yeah, the pulling the cross, the, the string back is considered your interaction with the object. It's a decent amount of... It's a lot of micromanaging with that. So, eh, did maybe you want later. to do anything or not? Any kind of armor that I can... Anything better than the set of better armor that I have? Studded leather, studded leather, um, studded leather. I you think you've you, just no. bought studded leather. Uh, yeah. Not in the light armor division. In okay. fact, you would not get anything better until scale mail, which gives like you the only armor that's better for you with medium armor, which you do not have proficiency with. You'd have to get proficiency with that. Is breastplate, which would give you an fourteen plus, plus one of maximum to and right. It would only give you plus stuff. one total AC. Uh, so that's at a like cost of 400 do. gold. Pieces. Yeah, it's a big what you do. You're not going to get any better armor than what you currently have outside of like studded armor plus one. Or, or magical. Plus one. Yeah. Magical. Okay. Maybe find a rare ingredient and have a smith make it. Yeah. Possible. Okay. Like find something that's really, really hard and use that for stud the studded part of the leather. It'd be like a plus two or something like that. Mm. Depending on the smith, too. There's all kinds of variables. But yeah, otherwise, you're set on armor. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so then I'll, I'll look as I'm going and looking around. I see nothing that I can get to upgrade. I go, I walk up to the count, um, counter, and is the Smith's wife at the counter? Yeah, the Smith okay, is so. smithing with uh, Drake. Oh right. So you can, I'll... you can hear him uh, fiddle a little bit on Drake that he's not punching the steel right. <laughs> All right. So I'll ask the. Uh, blacksmith's wife then thanks for telling us about the tomb uh, is there anything else that you may have seen or heard anything strange about <sighs> let me think well there is one thing the iron uh, merchant who comes from the mountains is running late And usually, Goblins. usually he's actually on time. Goblins! So, stop coughing and start smashing the iron. <laughs> Am I overhearing this? <laughs> no, because you're smashing the iron. That makes a lot of noise. Okay. So, if you'd like, if you'd, you know, look into wow. that. That'd How long ago was he due? He's about four days due now. Four days due? How often does he come? Once a month with a big pile of, uh, of a, b a cart filled with iron. Huh. Okay, well just to make sure I will do... I will roll a... What is it, Perception check? Or insight? What are you gonna do? Insight, just to make sure like she's... I don't notice anything. Fishy about that. that. That would be inside, yes. Yeah, that's a, okay. okay. Uh, it's reading you must, someone. You must not be the trusting type. Well, oh, good. By all means, your character. If this is something she, she'd look at. Just make sure. Yeah. She's so, completely legit. You see no yeah, reason so, to district. Okay. So, uh, so I ask her then. So the merchant was supposed to come out of the hills from the north? Yeah, and. Uh, no, if you saw what northwest, like right here. At, well, compared to the river, M more more here. Like so near the river. Okay. Yeah, near the river. It uh, usually takes the river way. Okay. Uh, how far into the mountains does he come from? Mm, he is a dwarf, so I he probably come from the actual dwarven cities. Iron, they don't lack iron there, so they sell it. Okay, I'll see if I can check it out. Um, is there a 
will there be a reward for me if I can get it if I can find out what happened and either get him to you or at least return with information if he if he is actually um, you know in big problems or dead I definitely pay for the information of where the card itself is and general information of what happened to him if you manage to be ringing back and he tells me that he has been captured and you guy or you free them then of course there will be a reward not only from me but probably also from him okay you might, check even it out. Get, you might even get a reward from the dwarves themselves hmm. yeah I'll see if I can check it out thank you no thank you it would be quite helpful what time of the day is it again? Right, right now? No, well, you said you'd leave around midday, uh, midday so... Yeah. It's that how long, would it, how long would it take me to maybe just kind of spend the afternoon up there? <clears throat> what do you mean, spend the afternoon up there? Just to ch look around. Maybe mm, try to figure out what happened. You'd have to walk a crap ton. Okay. To to get anywhere close to the location where he probably could be. You can walk down the road to see if you can see him coming up, but... I don't think... That Yuma seems kind of useless. I, I think Yuma would realize that... I don't know, does Yuma remember that there are goblins in the mountains? Does well, she? As in, is it in your notes? No. So she would not. So she, um, how, how long would it take to get to like the edge of the mountains then? Uh, three days, probably. Oh, really? wow. okay. Why don't yeah. it take about a day? Because it's about the same distance as the, the where you have the house. That isn't the house. It's, one uh. of, it's the small town, which was two to three days away. Oh. But it was two days okay. north and then one day to the east. Roger. So this is about the same time okay well I guess I guess that I'll go over to our uh, actually it was camp so it's still three days but okay uh, I'll tell I'll go to the back and tell Drake hey we got a new job if you want one uh yeah assuming we can do it it can wait till tomorrow I'm a little busy here I'm sure it can uh, keep your eyes uh, on the fire lad how many times do I have to tell you? Right, right, right. And go back to pounding. No, not right, I'll right, talk. right. Do it. Do it right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it later, I say waving to Really, teaching an elf how to smith, it's a disaster. Okay, well then, then yeah, I'll just say, you can talk about I'll it. I'll let that go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just say, then I'll, I can I, talk. T uh, I, we can talk about it later tonight. I'll tell the others. Should we and just wait till the right. night? Or, All right. Well, not into the night, but then I'll go and Wait till early evening and everyone meets up, everyone's done. Yeah, everyone is done, everyone is, I think, back at the, at the pub. Yeah, I'll drop in after working. There's not a drop of sweat on me. So, all, I of just you don't are, sweat. <laughs> all of you are in the pub. So I say, the blacksmith's wife told me that... Uh, their iron delivery is running a few days late, and she wants to see if we can head into the hills and check it out. How much is she paying? She did not say. <sighs> shame, shame, shame. Uh, I'm going to tell everyone everything that I've heard. Okay, go ahead and go over that, like literally, because I did not write it down. Doing other things. I'm not gonna say anything. There was a um, no, there was a um, in Abida, there's something seen there. I can't remember what it was, but there was a reward to kill it. Cockatrice! Whatever. Uh, whatever, yeah, that. <laughs> uh, in a town to the east, there was statues that looked like living people, slash animals, and they're apparently they were said to be very beautiful. Uh, between Himera and was it Naxos? There were songs of land shark, 
people were moving away because of it. And in the mail, there was a manticore on the loose. Or from there. Alright. That's a lot of information. Um, so here's the real question. I want to know how strong these things are. So, I'm going to say, do I just, I'm going to ask the power part, does anyone, uh, anyone know how strong these things would be? I'd assume we need a roll for that, right? Um, you'd roll for each creature separately. Okay, um, what, it'll what roll? Be, uh, I, I think I'll run it into a nature check, or, um, let's see, what do we have? It can be a nature check, it can be a history check, or, you know, historical uh, things that you might have known. Okay. Yeah, uh, nature or history, choose. Same, same for me it's either It's both way. intelligence, but you might have a difference. Uh, uh, I am not proficient in either. So, you get plus one. That's... So this is which... We'll just say this one's the first one for the cockatrice? Yeah, sure. Uh, where does it start? Does it start from Yuma? Sure. Uh, okay. Yeah, it, st it starts from Yuma, yeah. So oh, that did, was... What's that rule for this time? Wait, oh yeah, you get plus two, because you have your half. So, that first roll should be an 18. I don't know why you rolled again, that could be for the next what? one, I guess. Yuma, what was your Wait, 17 what? for the previous? You rolled a 17. That was for the insight check. On the... Oh, uh, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, I remember. So, start the um, So, the cockatrice. Tommy, you are the one who knows the most of these creatures, so I'll just refer to you. Uh, cockatrice are mm, small creatures. They stand about the size of uh, a normal person's hip. Oh, Tyrannus is doing pretty decent also. Uh, they stand around the height of a person's hip. They are um, relatively fast little creatures. They have some resemblance of a bird. They have spikes on their head, on their backs. Um, relatively sharp nails on both their... It's, it, it, they're like semi-wings. They can't use them to fly. But they can use them to slap you in the face with. Um, they are generally considered as... Um, how would I put it? You'd need about four normal guards to fight one cockatrice and have a reasonable chance of kicking and its ass. So four normal guards is what, like a level one, per se? A half. I think uh, guards are 25 experience. I'll look at that. But Oh, so they they have a half, so four... Yeah, so okay. th they are... Yeah. They are for for normal people, they are quite dangerous, and people just don't want to mess with them. For adventurers, they are more of a low lower tier danger. But still, it's uh, in larger numbers, they are not right. something to mess with. And that's down south. And I'm I'm gonna say that I personally have a reason why I do not want to head south. So while it's a possibility. Maybe leave it for later. Um, next up, does anyone know information about the land shark? Go ahead and roll. Roll, that again. roll, roll your dice. Oh, that's not bad. Um, technically, is it the twenty again? Let's see. Uh, Tommy has done well. I'll yet again go to Tommy for this one. Although most people, uh, or most of you, know something. Do, do they sell candy grams? <laughs> 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 Alright. A land shark, or otherwise called bule, B U L E T T E, is a massive predator that terrorizes any land it inhabits. Um, it's also, it's also called the land shark. It lives only to feed increasingly and wraps you bullets fear no other creatures and they attack with no regard for superior numbers or strength. Um, this is something you have um, read some, uh, somewhere or heard somewhere in your previous travels. There is a reason 
white people who have uh, sighted a boule run. These creatures attack. It doesn't matter if you are with many it does, or few. If you seem larger than them or smaller, they attack. If they see a dragon, they try to kill the dragon. Because, wow. well, it's probably food. If they'd be able to defeat the dragon, yeah, probably not. Depends on the dragon, of course. But they don't naturally, f uh, they don't necessarily think about what they do. Uh, a boule attack, which is something you would also know, is normally um, most of the time you'd see uh, the landscape with a fin sticking out of it, coming towards you like a shark would do in the water. Oh! And suddenly, a boule jumps out of the ground and jumps on top of you and starts eating. Crap! How big are they? Uh, they are pretty large, actually. So they are large. They are bigger than most humans are. And if it were to be subjugated, no chance. Really? So its CR currently, at the very least, is unknown. But high. You, you. The, the biggest reason why you can't subjugate it is a known fact: is it eats everything inside. It. So, it doesn't care. It, well, it I mean, really kill it. Doesn't care. Subjugate also in for killing it. Mm. How many guards? <laughs> a fuck ton. Okay, that's and what I figured. From it's now just on high. The, from now on, that's a metric. <laughs> okay. Isn't it? Isn't there like a really weird metric that's like? I'm trying to remember what it was. Anyway, uh, the last one, I guess, unless there's any more information that's relevant. Mm, that's the information you do get. Okay. Finally, the manticore. Hey! Apparently, I've heard of manticores. They freak me the heck out. Beat ya. Might bring a might 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 bring a ball. <laughs> We've all heard of manticores, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Manticores, a fairly known creature. Uh, let me search it up. Uh, to everyone but the DM. I, that wasn't me who said it. <laughs> no, I need to know where it is. Yeah, well, under M, I'd assume. Yeah. <laughs> you can click on the table of contents in the monster manual. Let's see. Manticore. Uh, a monster in very essence of the word. A manticore has the vaguely humanoid, humanoid head, the body of a lion, and the wings of a dragon. A bristling mane stretches down the creature's back, and its long tail ends in a cluster of deadly spikes that can impale prey at impressive range. They are known to be ferocious, uh, pure evil. They like to toy with prey. They attack with the, their claws, their mouth, so biting at the spike on their tail. They are. Um, more dangerous than a cockatrice, less dangerous than a boule. That's a big gap, apparently. All right. So upon gathering this information, I'd say, and I just, uh, did Yuma share the information? Yeah, she did, right? Yeah, about the I, I'd, job at I'd, work. I'd, I'd say. Given that there are goblins, uh, what do we know of goblins actually? Can we like, uh, talk to them? What do people? You can actually speak goblin. Well, you speak orc goblin? Isn't orc? No. Orc is goblin. No. Goblin orc is goblin. Is not goblin. goblin. Okay. Orcish is orcish. Okay. Actually, no, orcish okay. is. That, orcish that is, is not orcish. Orcish is orc. Yeah, orc. Anyway, so yeah, we'll do a, I guess, another intelligence roll for them. If you want to. Yeah. Let's to. see what people know about goblins. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, wow! We're doing this all out of combat! Never mind. There's a five. Um, this is a size comparison for the creatures within D&D. On the complete left you have a uh, small. Next to that is a human. Next to that are creatures that can be considered large. Next to that are creatures that are huge, giant, monstrous and a dragon. And the uh, 
The cockatrice is about human noid size, slightly smaller than that. The manticore is large, so it's about uh, they have one step to the right of the little human, you can see. And the boule is one step to the right of that. <coughs> size comparison ID. Mm -hmm. People would know that. Okay. Finally... Uh, that's 19, 21, 9, and a 10. In Yuma, you know the most of goblins. Even though I don't know they're up there. <laughs> yeah. You have no clue, but know that they exist and you know a little bit about them. You are a bard. Yeah, you probably know a few, a few goblin songs. Um, about goblins or goblin songs, because there's a difference. Probably songs about goblins. Okay. If you speak <laughs> goblin, you'd probably not be able to. Anyway, goblins are black-hearted, selfish humanoids that layer in caves, abandoned mines, despoiled dungeons, and other dismal settings. Individually, they are weak. Goblins get it in a large, sometimes overwhelming numbers. They crave power and regularly abuse whatever authority they obtain. There are multiple types of goblins. You have your basic run in the middle goblin. It's a small humanoid creature, so smaller than humans, probably the size of a dwarf. Uh, they are mean, not necessarily fairly dangerous. Very dangerous. Um, they, um, they are cowards if they are alone. If they are with a larger group, they will attack and that's when they are most dangerous in larger groups. You have the goblin boss, it's basically a bigger, fatter, slightly stronger goblin. Uh, he leads the other goblins. Mm, yeah, that's about it. They're just slightly better. Goblins then fight with uh, skimitar-like weapons, short sword skimitars. And they like short bows. And finally, there's a subspecies of goblin. They are called hobgoblins. Mm -hmm. And these are more serious creatures. You know that they are more dangerous, but less more. Uh, you don't know more than that. Unless you is, want to roll for hobgoblins. Is a, would a 21 also give us that at least that they tend to be around another type of creature? Out beyond hobgoblin? Um, yeah, you'd probably know that uh, goblins also uh, have the capability to ride walks. Not what I was referring to, but okay. <laughs> so yeah, they, they can ride wards. <sighs> Alright, so taking this information, even though we don't really have a set idea, for what our rewards would be, although we can say the same for everything. Theoretically, the safest thing for us to do at this point would be to go for the iron shipment, because if we we could theoretically not run into anything hostile, and if we do, most likely would be goblins, other goblinoids, which would be much easier to handle than a land shark or manticore, most likely. Any thoughts as to what we should do? Because my vote right now is for the iron shipment. I think that's best because it's also closest to. I will also second that. Okay, fair enough on that count. I'll, I'll accept that. Sounds good. Alright. Uh, so, leave tomorrow morning? Sure. Sounds good. Okay, so um, I'm just going to go back to camp. Make sure everything's more or less in order and I will turn in a little early because A, I was very strenuous activity all day and B, we can leave it really early in the morning. Oh come and on, you do that without breaking a sweat. Not because <laughs> it wasn't strenuous. I didn't yeah, break a sweat yeah. because I can't break a sweat. It is physically yeah, yeah, yeah. impossible for me to break a sweat. Yeah, yeah. You are literally doing this to, your, uh, to the other people. Right no. Now. <laughs> I huh. did not make a comment unless they comment on it. 
like how like hey wow you did a lot of work for not breaking a sweat because I would have what I would have been wearing that's that's what I would my, say I would be wearing my common clothes but they're they're modified they cover more of my body hmm. so um, there's one yeah, perception check there's one more slight thing for the goblins mm -hmm. um, they uh, they are also referred to by the dwarves and by some orcs as Gretchen. Hmm. Just as long as they're not illithid, I'm all cool with it. Like this. Um. All right. I... So if we're all gonna turn into bed, everyone make their paint whatever lifestyle payments you need. Are you going to drink the same amount, Tommy? A little bit less. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, so it's five for the night, five silver for the night, and what you're gonna drink? Half a gallon. No, all right, then you'll get one <laughs> silver, so that's six. At all. <laughs> Still an insane amount. <laughs> well, he lost a couple of days, which isn't new to him. Okay. <laughs> um, I think we I, I, should take, uh, a break. take a break. Yeah, we'll let, we'll let, we'll take a t five ten minute break. Let Rath get ready for all the encounters. I'm sure we're gonna run into, hey. and then uh, start heading up north and getting something to drink, of course. Of cool. course. Yep.